You're watching Rhythm of Life on ABC 27, presented by Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Heart disease can strike at any age, even to a baby in the womb. About one in 120 babies are born with congenital heart disease. Deborah Pinkerton met a Cumberland County woman who was born with congenital heart disease. Professor Dawn Vernoy Epp is editing two romantic novels by a late 18th century author, stories that touch the heart. And Dawn has her own heartfelt story to tell, too. When I was born, my parents were told that I had a heart defect called Tetralogy of Fallot, which basically meant that I had a hole between the two lower chambers of my heart and that a valve was too small. Initially, Dawn didn't have any problems, but it became apparent her heart wasn't working right. As I got older, um, I would uh, have difficulty breathing. I'd squat like a duck, which looked cute, but was not, um, was not a, good, a good thing for me because I was having, having trouble breathing. When Dawn was four, doctors performed open heart surgery to repair the defect. The surgery was successful. Uh, the doctors did a great job, and I thought I was fixed, repaired, done. Um, and as a matter of fact, when I was 18, my pediatric cardiologist said I didn't need to come back unless I started having symptoms like chest pain or heart palpitations. Years passed. Dawn graduated with a Ph.D. in 19th century British literature. She married and is a professor at Shippensburg University. No heart problems until a year and a half ago. It felt like a butterfly was caught in my chest and like I, like I wanted to cough. Heart palpitations took Dawn to Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Her right ventricle is severely dilated. It's larger than the left ventricle, and this is the problem in repaired tetralogy of Fallot. The ventricle becomes enlarged because of her previous surgery. Dr. Jennifer Grando-Ting is part of a program at the medical center that specializes in adult congenital heart disease a disease that affects about one million adults in the United States. These patients need lifelong care. Even though they're feeling very well, their repair helped them grow, but in fact needs further tune-up, so to speak, and needs a checkup. In Dawn's case, she needs open heart surgery again. Doctors will repair her heart this month. They will put in a prosthetic pulmonary valve where that previous uh, surgery opened up the right ventricle, that area will be surgically reshaped and a valve will be placed, which then will be competence. An operation that will give this heartfelt story a happy ending. It gives me hope and it gives everybody who is like me hope um, because the, uh, what used to be unknown is now known. They, they know how to, to preserve and protect our hearts. Dr. William Davidson, director of the program for adults with congenital heart disease, joins us now. Is there an update on Dawn's condition? Yes, Dawn had surgery Monday. She did very, very well. You could see the heart was decompressed right at the end of surgery very nicely. She either went home tonight or she'll go home in the morning just a few days after surgery. She feels great. She already feels better than she did before surgery. Now, that sounds like a very complex story and so on, but her story is not unique, is it? No, her story is not unique at all, Chuck. Uh, there's over a million Americans with this, these kinds of conditions. There are 40 or 50 different conditions, and they all require specialized attention, but most of these patients are not in any kind of specialized care. That's good to know that they're on top of it. Everything. Thank you. We were talking during, the, during one of the breaks there just how many of these procedures you do and everything. Well, Amazing. That's, we have about 1,300 visits a year. Uh, we have three physicians and a nurse practitioner working full-time to care for these patients. We collaborate with our pediatric cardiologists and our pediatric heart surgeons. And it's been a very large and successful program, one of the oldest in the country. That's why it works. Well, I guess so. All right, let's check back in, I think, for the final time, maybe, Deborah Pinkerton at the call center. Deborah, how are the phones working there tonight? Hi, Chuck. This is the last question. It says, what is the current status of stem placement in the neck arteries to prevent strokes? Deb, the carotid arteries in the neck supply blood flow to the brain. When they become clogged with plaque, strokes can occur. Surgery is successful, but there are newer, less invasive treatments to place stents in the neck arteries that also give very good results. A heart and vascular specialist can tell you which one is best for each patient. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Atnip, for joining us and for all the doctors here for answering your telephone calls. Back to you, Chuck. And thank you, Deborah, and thank you, Dr. Davidson, for joining us here tonight. And yeah, thank you for calling in with all the questions. We appreciate that. I mean, uh, those, fangs, those phones started to ring. 
seven o'clock and haven't stopped since. So I helped for a while. Yeah, that's you did out there help answering all those questions, and thank you for calling in there to uh, give us all those questions. And uh, if you didn't hear from us right now, you will later on with a follow-up call from Hershey Med Center. Now, throughout the month of February. Penn State Hershey Heart and Vascular Institute is offering several free Heart Smart events listed on your screen. Now they'll focus on various aspects of heart disease, and these programs will be held in the University Conference Center, which is adjacent to the Medical Center in Hershey. For more information or to register, call the Medical Center's care line at 1-800-243-1455. So, 